Heather and Mark Latinsky um, from Minnesota. He was injured November 19th of 2010. So we've been here about a year now, just over. Um, we expect, it's kind of tough to say when, we're, when we'll be heading back. Not only do they have to become proficient with their prosthetics and the different things that are available to them, uh, but they have to get themselves set up so that they have a smooth transition when they go home. He stepped on an IED, they call it a pressure plate IED. Um, they're designed to go off right when you step on them. The pressure um, kind of completes the circuit and the battery and, and then it detonates. Um, so they were just on a, on a foot patrol and that's a lot of the, the guys are getting injured that way. I was, he was only injured two months into the deployment. So I had moved back home to Minnesota. Um, I was living with my parents, job hunting. I was working at Starbucks at the time just to keep my sanity while he was away on deployment. Um, so I was in, just got into work and I got a phone call and I didn't even hear the words like government or marines. All I heard was headquarters and that they needed me to stay there. They needed to come speak with me. They, they hated to do this. And I could tell something was really wrong with their voice. Thankfully for me, he was stabilized very fast and he was in Germany two days later. So once he was in Germany, I could speak with his doctors and nurses. Um, two days after that, he came back to the States. A few months after he was injured, he was getting off the medications. He was kind of coming around enough to be able to participate in activities, which is really important for um, the mental part of the rehab, as well as understanding for them that there's things that they definitely can still do. And so he told us about golf, and he got to the driving range a couple times with friends and enjoyed it, but didn't know how to actually play. He was on the prosthetics, trying to golf, wasn't working so good, I had to like stand behind him and hold him at the hips, because they're not very stable on the prosthetics, um, especially double above knee. Mm -hmm. And then one of the times that we went there, um, they took out the paragolfer and he strapped into it and, and loved it. I mean, he was actually then able to able to play and without his wife holding him at the waist. So he, he loved it from then on. Before then, he thought, you know, this is just another thing that's not going to work. We need to figure it to um, all different sorts of injuries. Uh, and lots of times the bolts are down here at the bottom, so if you're a higher up amputee, you can use it. Originally, this was designed for uh, paraplegics and quadriplegics, but we've adapted it now for people who are amputees. There's so many deaths coming out right now with serious injuries. Um, we're also a nonprofit, and what I want to do is say thank you very much to the Independence Fund because uh, of their generosity. Yes. Because uh, their generosity. We have been donating a pair of golfers to start a new chapter for wounded vets down in Stewart, Florida. Um, it's the first time anybody's has come to us and said, we want to buy this and we want to start a chapter. Put it wherever you want to put it. So I want to say thank you very much. This is an amazing organization. We're all very happy and proud of part of it. And we would like to say, Mark, what are you doing? Take out the seriously. <laughs> okay, what can we go back to the show? Okay, while you're here, you're going to have life, but when you get home, there's people who donate it to you. You have one when you get home. I started playing after my injury and with this equipment. I've actually gotten quite good at it. So you're going to keep playing? Oh, definitely. definitely. Huh. The wife's learning how to play too. So so How's she like it? She's actually liking it. She likes the fact that it's something we can do together and not have that competitive advantage. You know, it's just something we're not there. Cool. Cool.